Welcome to the April 14th, 2024 edition of Into the Word with John Rich. This week marks the fourth anniversary of the Into the Word video series. With that, I'm going to take just a little bit of time to talk about Into the Word. I found it Into the Word back in 2000, originally as a radio broadcast. But the goal was to bring the Word of God into people's lives and cause people to, to take a little bit of time to think on God's Word. That transitioned over to doing the uh, daily nuggets, uh, little devotions, and then four years ago into the video series. Also, back in August of 2021, we started this Foundations series. So, we're approaching three years on this series. You know, through all of these years of Into the Word Ministries, there's been a lot of changes in our world, but one thing that has not changed, that's the Word of God. So, we may be approaching spreading the Word of God in a different way than Into the Word originally was doing, but the Word is still the same. And with this Foundations series, the original intent was to look at Old Testament scriptures that were foundational to the New Testament. And the thoughts at the time were that this would be at the most a two to three month series thinking on scriptures that are often thought of as being foundational. But the more I got into it, the more God began to show me it's all foundational. So we've been walking through, not really verse by verse, but walking through the Old Testament and going somewhat story by story. Yes, skipping over a few passages here and there. But learning about these Old Testament scriptures with an understanding that they have New Testament implications. We've made it up into the book of 1 Kings where we were talking last night week about Jeroboam. Jeroboam was the first king of the the northern ten tribes of Israel uh, after the kingdom split after Solomon died. And we're going to continue today talking about Jeroboam. Now, I am going to skip over the 13th chapter of 1 Kings, but I encourage you to read that on your own. Uh, that chapter talks about God sending a message uh, to King Jeroboam from a man of God out of Judah. And at the end of that chapter, Jeroboam refused to heed the warning of the man of God. So he continued to worship the idols, as we talked about last week. So we're going to pick up in the 14th chapter, starting at verse 1 of 1 Kings. If you have your Bible with you, if you have an electronic device with the Bible on it, turn with me there. The verses should also be on the screen as I read them. The scripture says, at that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, 
Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam. And get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. And take with thee ten loaves and cracknels and a cruise of honey, and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose, and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, For it shall be when she cometh in that she shall feign herself to be another woman. And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Go, tell Jeroboam, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, For as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in mine eyes, but hast done evil above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made the other gods, and molten images to provoke me to anger, and has cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung till it all be gone. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat, for the Lord hath spoken it. Arise thou therefore, get thee to thine own house, and when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave. Because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? Even now, for the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of his this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking the Lord to anger. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin and who made Israel to sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Terzah. And when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. And they buried him, and all Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by the hand of his servant Ahijah the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred, and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the days which Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his stead. Now, as we look into this story, and you know, we're not told initially how old that Jeroboam's son Abijah was, we are told that he was a child, but we're not told whether he was a baby or an older child. 
would be led to believe that he was at least not a baby. So as we look at this, though, I want to look at this as a story of God's wrath and God's mercy. See, God created mankind to worship him. That was our purpose. And God has pronounced vengeance on all those who are in rebellion against him. Micah 5.15 says, And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Then Romans 12, 19 tells us that God said that vengeance is mine. I will repay. Hebrews 10, 30 says, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Then Jude 1, 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So you see, we are all deserving of God's wrath. Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. You see, you are not righteous. I'm not righteous. No one other than Jesus Christ is righteous. And the wages of sin is death. That death is, a, is an eternal death in a place called hell. You see, vengeance, it said back there in June, was an eternal fire. Burning forever and ever and ever. God here told Jeroboam, I'm going to take vengeance upon you, upon your whole household because of your sin. But there is good news. Even though Jeroboam's whole family was in rebellion against God, there was hope. You see, Abijah... Jeroboam's son, God said, I have found some good in him. And just as Abijah had hope, we have hope today. Our hope is not in who we are. Because if our hope was in who we are, all is lost. But our hope today is in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ came into this world to seek and to save 
that which was lost. Knowing that we're in rebellion against God. But knowing that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, salvation doesn't come about because of mama or daddy. Salvation doesn't come about because of any family. Salvation doesn't come about because of the church. Salvation doesn't come about because of the preacher. Salvation is an individual thing. So I want to ask you today. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And that, that repayment is going to be an eternal punishment in hell. But God also has mercy on all those who will come to the Father through Jesus. Have you received Jesus as your personal Savior? Individually. Not because somebody said you had, but because you, from the bottom of your heart, believed. And God accounted it for righteousness. And washed away your sins in the blood of the Lamb. If you've not received Christ, right now is the best time. If you have received Christ, there's probably somebody in your family or in your circle of friends who hasn't. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, if you've not received Christ, I want you to pray and believe. If you have received Christ, I want you to pray for someone who hasn't. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, knowing that vengeance belongs to you. Knowing, dear God, that it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But Lord, that all who do not come to the Father through Jesus will suffer an eternity in the flames of hell. Lord, I just pray, dear God, that, that any who may be under the sound of my voice that doesn't know Jesus as Savior, Lord, even at this moment, would give their heart and life to Jesus repenting of their sins and believing to the salvation of their soul. And Lord, I pray for those who are listening, Lord, who have friends and loved ones who don't know Jesus. Lord, use them to be a light into the life of others. To show, dear God, that even When there's rebellion against you, there is hope in Jesus. And Father, I thank you for that hope that you've given us. I thank you, dear God, that salvation doesn't depend on others. It just depends, dear God, on Jesus Christ. Lord, I praise you and I worship you in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. I'd ask if you've prayed today and you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior, let me know about it. 
I'd love to talk to you about what next steps might be. Until next week, God bless.